Well, the, in this last presentation, I will uh, talk about how we measure and how we specify the absorbing efficiency of uh, absorbent products. And especially how we specify the acoustics of uh, these type of free hanging units that are used uh, quite commonly in these TAPS buildings, TAPS solutions. Okay. So there, there are some standards that we use quite a lot when we specify the absorbing properties. And the basic standard that, that is called ISO 354. And uh, in that standard, we can, we can uh, get specification how to measure the absorption on plane absorbers, on uh, discrete sound absorbers, and also on baffles. And this standard is also called uh, the reverberation room method. So it used quite a lot, but normally the outcome of this standard, when we do the measurement, many manufacturers of acoustical products, they don't use this data directly. Instead, we use another standard that is called ISO 11654. And uh, this standard, it uh, gives us some guidelines how to simplify the information from the room method. And that means that we... Uh, calculate something that is more practical that we present on our websites and so on, when we present the data of our products. And that is called practical absorption coefficient. And as a further simplification, we can also calculate a single number value, which is called alpha W. And as another further simplification, based on this uh, alpha W value, we can classify the absorbers into different classes from A to E. And just re recently, we have also a sort of test code. I think it has quite recently been, been approved, which, uh, so to say, give us the best practice how to perform the measurement in the ISO 354 standard. Uh, because uh, the thing is that we have many certified laboratories in Europe that do this type of measurement. But the spread in data between different laboratories is quite large. And to a little bit improve the reproducibility, so to say, to, to decrease the standard deviation between those laboratories, uh, we have some, so to say, some more detailed information in this, this uh, test code that could be used, how to perform the measurement in the ISO 354 standard. So that will, but still, uh, I have to say that there is still a quite spread in data between different laboratories. But that's another story. <laughs> I will not take that here. But just for the sake of clarity, uh, I will talk a lot about absorption. But the absorption coefficient is defined in the following way that if you imagine that we have a sound wave that um, uh, meets an absorber, then some part of the en sound energy will be reflected and the other will be either absorbed in the absorber, converted into heat, or transmitted through the absorber. But we say that the, the sound that uh, is not reflected, that is absorbed, and the ratio between the absorbed energy and the incident sound energy, that is what we call absorption coefficient. So if all energy is absorbed, then the absorption is one. If everything is reflected, then it's zero. So there we have the basic. Now if we, we go back to this standard, this ISO 354 standard, it's quite simple because what we, what we use is a sort of reverberation room. That's a hard, very reflecting room. And in this room, we try to create a sort of diffuse sound field by having uh, diffusers hanging in the room. And what you do when you do the measurement, that is you put the sample into the room and then you measure the reverberation time and then you take it away and then you measure the reverberation time again. And simply after that you use the Sabine equation and you get the absorption coefficient. And the outcome of this type of measurement is uh, the sound absorption coefficient as a function of the frequency. But sometimes, and this is quite typical for these results, that sometimes it's 
uh, over one. And that is quite unphysical because you can't absorb, absorb more energy than 100 percentage. And that is due to the area of the sample. So that's one reason why, why, why we do this simplification. And the next simplification is that we calculate according to this second standard, what is called as a practical uh, absorption coefficient. And here you see we have, a, there are two simplifications. First of all, we do not allow values larger than one. And the second is that the results are presented in octabands, meaning that we have not that de detailed description as we have in the, in the results from the room method. And uh, the third sim simplification is that we can take this practical absorption coefficient and then we compare with some reference curve. I will not go into detail here, but when we have adjusted the reference curves, those ones here, then we read the value at 500 hertz and then we get something that is called the weighted absorption coefficient, alpha w. And depending on the value of this alpha w, we can then classify the absorber into yeah, six different classes from A to unclassified. So, but the basic for this method is uh, quite well known, say, by an equation, which gives us a relation between reverberation time and the total absorption. And in this formula, Seiban, he, he, so to say, invented something that he called the equivalent absorption area. And this equivalent absorption area is equal to the, if we have a plan absorber like a ceiling absorber, it's equal to the absorption coefficient times the physical area of the absorber. Uh, sometimes th this uh, equivalent absorption area is called open window area because if you see in this expression here that if the absorption coefficient is equal to one, then the equivalent absorption area is equal to the physical area of the absorber. And uh, that means that open window, I mean, we said that a sound that uh, travels towards an open window will be absorbed. All sound will be absorbed, so the absorption coefficient will be equal to one. So just to explain this equivalent absorption area a little bit more, we can see, for example, if we have an absorbent ceiling with an area of 60 square meters, like in the classroom, for example, and we said that we had an absorption coefficient of 0.8 at 500 hertz, for example. Then the equivalent absorption area will be, according to this expression, 0.8 times 60, that is 48 square meter. So how do we interpret this figure? Well, we can say that this 60 square meter of ceiling absorption with a absorption coefficient of 0.8 will absorb the same amount of energy as a ceiling absorber of the area 48 square meter with an absorption coefficient of one. So there you see the, the use of this uh, equivalent absorption area. And the nice thing and the most important thing when we're not talking about free hanging units is that if we don't if we can't define the surface of the absorber. Like for example, if it is a furniture, it is a human being or whatever, then we don't have to do it. We can stick to the equivalent absorption area as a, as a measure of the absorption. And that's a quite nice uh, property. And in fact, that, that is what we really measure when we do the measurement according to ISO 354. So first we measure the in this case, the equivalent absorption area for the sample here. And then if it is, if it is a plain uh, suspended ceiling absorber, for example, then we simply divide this equivalent absorption area by the area. And then we have the absorption coefficient. So normally when we measure, for example, on a typical suspended ceiling, 
then uh, we also measure uh, on different mounting heights, for example. But in order to have a well-defined surface area, then uh, we need to have a frame around the uh, absorber. So in this case, when we measure on plane absorbers, we have a well-defined area. We know which area is exposed for sound. And then we can simply calculate the absorption coefficient. But when we come to these free hanging units, then it's a little bit more tricky because then we don't exactly know uh, how much area is exposed for sound. Because in this case, yeah, both, the, both the rear side and the exposed side could be exposed for sound. And it's a little bit tricky to say how much effective area is uh, hits or hit by the sound wave, so to say. But that's no problem. The, instead, for calculating the absorption coefficient, we present the data as the equivalent absorption area. And this is the reason why, for all these type of uh, uh, free hanging units, we use uh, the equivalent absorption area instead of the absorption coefficient. And normally, we use the ab equivalent absorption area per object. And this could also be measured according to ISO 354. And there is a lot of, uh, yeah, there, there are some restrictions how to do this type of measurement. But very simply, we can say that we put the free hanging units into the room in the same way as we put the plane absorber. And in this case, for example, if we put in six free hanging units, we measure the total absorption. And then we simply divide by six so we get the equivalent absorption area per, per unit. Now, there are some restrictions concerning, uh, I mean, you, you can't just put in a very small absorber into this celebration room and try to measure the equivalent absorption area because you need a certain amount to have some statistics, significant values. Uh, and you also need to have a certain distance from the walls and so on. So sometimes it could be quite tricky if you have very large free hanging units or small one. Okay, this is an example of a free hanging unit, the Zulu product. And it's quite interesting to see that, uh, as you know, for a suspended ceiling, the absorption depends on the, on the distance from the soffit. And it's the same with the free hanging units, but it is a little bit different. We can look at the results here. And then you can see those are the different uh, distances from the floor, from 100 millimeter up to 1,000. So as you see, when we increase the distance, we get uh, higher, more absorption at higher frequencies. But if we have a distance more than, say, 800 or 1,000 meter, then we get the same values. So, we, so in that case, it works that this was a little bit independent of the, of the distance from the floor. And sometimes we put the free hanging units at the ray, and that will also <laughs> influence the, um, uh, the absorption efficiency, the distance between the elements and the array. But it's also so here that we can have some we see that when the distance between the elements is more than, say, half a meter, then they work more or less like they were independent objects. So that's another rule of thumb we can use. Uh, but first, I think I will skip that one and instead show this figure that Colin already discussed, that is the difference between a full ceiling and free hanging units. And the main point is that normally we can reach the same absorbing efficiency at high frequencies, but at low frequencies, we normally have less absorption for these free hanging units. And of course, we can improve it by adding low frequency absorption, but it's uh, worth uh, having that in mind that these free hanging units are not like uh, that efficient like a full ceiling. So yes, this is the final one. So for the full ceiling, it's quite easy to help present the data. That is the uh, practical absorption coefficient. 
And for free hanging units with the smaller size, we use the equivalent absorption area. But as you know, sometimes we can put the free hanging units in larger clusters. And the question is, when should we use absorption coefficient and when should we use equivalent absorption area? And uh, the answer that we recommend is that we use 10 square meter as a limit between a surface where we use the absorption coefficient and if it's less than 10 square meter, then we use the equivalent absorption area. And the reason for that is that 10, when we do the measurement according to I2354, uh, we, um, it's recommended to use an area of 10 to 12 square meters. So the rule is like this. So if the clusters are larger than 10 square meter, then we use the absorption coefficient, and if it's less than 10, square meter, then we use the equivalent absorption area per cluster. And that's exactly what we do for our products for this master matrix you can see here. If they are big, practical as sound absorption coefficient. If they are small, equivalent absorption area per cluster. So, so uh, yeah, that is the conclusion. And uh, yeah, I've already told you, this is 10 square meter, can you remember? <laughs> that's <laughs> what you have to know. Thank, Thank you. you very much.